Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, we're just stopping right here real, really, really fast to throw some fruit out at our little hunting spot uh, right here alongside of the driveway. I have uh, tomatoes and peaches that I just picked up from the fruit stand. But I will not be throwing tomatoes over here. The tomatoes are for the pigs. I'll be throwing a handful of peaches over here because we have a nice little 10 pointer that's been showing up. Uh, Kim seen him, Kim seen him uh, the other day coming down the driveway going to work. So I put the trail camera up and we got some good pictures of him this morning. So hopefully keeping some peaches out here. We've got the corn feeder going. Hopefully all that will keep him out here where Jessica will get a chance to, to get this joker in three weeks. Believe it or not, archery season here in Georgia starts in about three weeks. So we're really getting fired up about that. So let me throw some peaches out real quick and then we're going to head up to the pigs and give the pigs the rest of these tomatoes. Alright guys, we're driving up here to the pig. This is about to get loud because Mia don't know how to not bark at these pigs. And I had to stop and get the dogs because they want out. Come on. Hey. Alright. Let's go. Come, come, come. Alright. Mia has to bark at the dogs. Or she barks at the pigs, I mean, not the dogs. But she waits until, as soon as I unlatch the gate, she barks every single time. she had to go prove me wrong <laughs> but any other time she would bark she waits till i unhook the gate odin doesn't say a word odin is they both are so weird they have such different personalities but they do like chasing them around the pen but they won't come in because electric wire of course the pigs won't come out look at me she's sitting waiting as soon as i get close and we start down this pen She'll start barking. Every single time. Mia, 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 come. And as you can see, we moved the, pe the feeder. I had it right there. I had to carry the feed every time from over here through the wood to here. And I stopped doing that because I think the pigs got sick of waiting for the feed. I had one of the piglets grab the back of my pants leg. <laughs> so I took that as a hint. Hey, when you come in, feed us. So I moved the feeder over to here. I just got to buckle it down. They hadn't started throwing it around yet, but I moved it right over to here. That way I can just come in and feed them right off. Yeah, today's my Friday, so I'll be moving this over to here tomorrow and putting some T-posts in here and lock it down right here because I have a feeling this water hole is going to grow. I don't know. They got a pretty good water hole right here that they've worked out. There's the girls. They're looking good. Hey, that right? <laughs> hmm. And there's the babies. They're growing up. They're growing up. Like I said before, this is Mo. The kids call her Mohawk, but I started calling her Mo for short. They call her Mohawk because she's got that brown stripe right there down her face. And she is just the absolute best piglet ever. This one here is a little on the skittish side, but it's hungry, so it's taking whatever. It's taking whatever. All right. 
Well, leave in the comment section below if you like me to do a, a pig update video. <laughs> I hadn't talked about the pigs in a week or so. And they're growing. My gosh, they're growing so big. These over here, we don't bulk feed uh, because I have to sort of regulate their feed. I don't want them to get too big. But the meat pigs over there with Al, uh, I've been bulk feeding them. And they are twice as big as those girls. They're huge. They're just huge. I know I didn't do any video on them, but they're really, really huge. All right, what I wanted to talk about in today's video is our other vineyard. I put out a video just a few days ago uh, about our smaller vineyard. It was the first one we started on when we first moved here. I put in two vines one year, then four vines the next year. Then the following year, I put in five vines over here uh, with uh, the hopes of doing the whole pasture. But we ran out of money because <laughs> I'm on a budget. And so I just got the five rows in that one year. Well, then being out of money the following year, we didn't do anything. And uh, so it drove me nuts. Then the year after that, <laughs> We finally just decided to bite the bullet and finish this whole pasture. And we did all the rest of the vines. And I'm not exactly sure, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 or so more rows uh, to finish out the field with I think 12 plants per row of uh, the longer rows, I believe is what it was. But uh, as you can see, they're doing good. They're on their, these are two year old plants. And they're doing good. Now, not all of them are doing good. The majority, I would say, are doing good. We've finally been getting a lot of rain, so that's been helping out. And uh, starting tomorrow, we're supposed to get like a five-day stretch of just rain, 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 rain. So that's really going to help. We still have a lot of growing left to do. Uh, these things will grow right on up into mid-September, October, something like that. But I'll show you some of these two-year-old plants. And remember, these are two-year-old plants. Of course, I do have some weaker ones uh, that I've actually talk to Ison's about <laughs> but uh, we're gonna I'm gonna do some replacing this year I got some I need to replace but this but I have some really really good two-year-old plants uh, like this one is a good one it's full of grapes it's got some that's a bad grape right there but it's got some pretty decent little grapes on it it's got some pretty decent little grape there's a good one right there that's a nice one mm-hmm that one there is pretty good. That one's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But like this one right here is a really good vine. It goes to this post. And then the one beside it is really, really good. And they're just loaded with grapes. For a second year plant, they're really looking pretty good. I'm happy with them. I'm happy. That's a good grape I'll eat. I mean, no. That one's still got some growing to do. <laughs> There's a good one. But it's a small one. Huh? That's still... I still got a little ways to go. But as you can see across from that one, there's another good one there. And uh, it's got some grapes. And there's a lot of good vines out here for our second year. There are really a lot of good ones. Uh, there's a handful that are, I think are just weaker plants uh, and need to be replaced. We also have some <laughs> we hit one with a lawnmower a really nice one <laughs> we hit a big one with a lawnmower but check this out this one was a good looking plant and uh we accidentally hit the stump when the grass was real high we hit the stump the lawnmower bounced and clipped this and cut it in half but i just let it grow i let it grow and like i say these guys are tough like i say we cut it in, completely in half and it just took off and uh, remember, anything on you, I should be keeping this clean. So we'll pull that off. Keep your trunk clean. Let you, I can leave the leaves. But anyway, it came up, and I'm already letting it split. And you can see it's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. I'm just going to leave it alone, and we'll let this one grow. Because this was a really, really strong plant. It actually it had already went to both ends. You could see with the tendrils had grabbed all the way down the wire. It, it was all the way to the end on both sides. It was just a really good plant, but that kind of stuff happens. 
I need to get out here and cut some grass. It's been raining a lot. The grass is growing like crazy. But the vineyard is really looking good. I think we may possibly be able to open next year. I'm thinking, uh, we was talking about it. I think we may open up just for the weekend. See what it looks like. And Because uh, we'll be selling pork too. We'll be selling other stuff. Pork. Uh, all the all the pork we're getting processed, it'll be USDA inspected. So we'll be selling the pork, eggs, and just whatever else we can come up with on the farm. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I think we'll open it for one weekend and then do an evaluation, see what is left. And uh, if there's a lot left, we may open up the, the second weekend. But we'll just play it by ear. Like I say, we still got a lot of growing to do, and I got a handful I need to replace. Let me show you these guys while we're standing here. They have gotten way bigger. Al is huge. And look how thick these guys are. They just look like little football players. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but they're wanting some grass. They're wanting some grass. They're really, really getting big. And we don't ever let them run out of food. We bulk feed them. And of course, they get their fruit every single day. They're just looking great. Look at this guy. He's just a butt ball. He's just a butt ball. Mia! Mia! All right, I got to get away from there. <laughs> These are our older plants. The five rows I said earlier uh, that we planted a uh, few years back. I want to say they're four years old, three or four years old. They're doing great. I want to walk up and down some of these and just talk a little bit about our muscadines. All right, as you can see, these look way, way different. And they are loaded with grapes. And these, I believe, are the supreme. I got them. I got them wrote down at the end of the eye, at the end of the rows down there. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, supreme. They're way more fleshy. Mmm. Way more of a fleshy, firm. They really have a firm inside, uh, not like the icing. Let's just see. I think this is a row of icing here. And they're just loaded too. And they're always way softer. And in my opinion, way sweeter. They're really, really good. You got a step in a snake. These are our grapes. They're really, really doing fantastic. This is what you guys will get after about your fourth year. And they're just like that. All the way down the entire row. From one end to the other. It is solid grapes. Look at this one. It has such a thick canopy over it. It's hard to really tell unless you're up here close on them. But look how thick that is. I mean, really, really tight with grapes. I probably could have come in and done some thinning. Let's get up under here and look. Look up under there. Oh, my goodness. Just absolutely loaded all the way from one end of the wire to the other. Look this way. Just loaded with grapes. Loaded, loaded, loaded. I'll start right here. We're uh, not halfway down the row, but we're a quarter way down the row. And I'll start and just sort of give you guys a quick glimpse of how they're doing. I mean, they're just doing awesome. Just doing awesome. They are absolutely loaded with grapes. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Now, I'm doing all this for a reason. <laughs> to talk to you guys about, of course, growing muscadines. But look at that. Of course, growing muscadines because I'm obsessed with them. But also, just growing fruit. Uh... I guess I'm in this homesteading slash uh, farming genre. <laughs> uh, 
I guess that's where I'm at. I like to hunt and fish, and I just like to video whatever, you know, trap, turtle trap, whatever. I, I just like to goof off, and I like to video it. But um, if you are homesteading, or if you have a small piece of property, I would highly recommend planting some fruit. Not just muscadines, but find out what zone you're in and plant some fruit according to the zone that you're in to grow yourself some fruit. I'm not much of a gardener. For you guys that have been subscribed to my channel for a while, no, I'm not a gardener. I'm the worst gardener. I honestly don't even like to garden. <laughs> I do a little, but it's probably my least favorite thing to do. That's why I don't have a lot of gardening videos. And every garden I start just never turns out well. I love growing fruit. I have a sweet tooth. I love growing fruit. I'm not good at it either. But muscadines are just easy to grow, so I grew a lot of them. But what I'm saying is you guys need to figure out what zone you're in, get some fruit, find a nursery near you, and get some fruit, trees, bushes, grapes, uh, whatever will grow well in your zone and plant them because you will have them for years to come. Fruit, fruit, fruit. It's good for you. It's fun. <laughs> and it tastes good. Vegetables do not taste good. I don't like vegetables. <laughs> fruit tastes good. You should be growing fruit. And uh, your grandkids love it. Your kids love it. Everybody in your family. It seems to grow everybody. Get everybody closer together. Especially when the fruit comes time to harvest. Now, now I know some of you guys can't. Some of you guys don't have... Uh, the opportunity to put some fruit on your property or you may not have property to put some fruit on but that's okay there's ways find somebody in your family volunteer to plant some fruit on their property my son he just bought him a new house a while back and that was the first thing i did we well, ran over there and uh i put four plants in the, three plants in the ground three muscadines just so he could have some muscadines up and coming and uh then we went and got some Apple trees from Ison's, which is my favorite nursery. <laughs> but we got him some apple trees. All of it's doing great. Now, it does take time to get all that stuff growing. But it's so fun, so rewarding. I just love all the stuff you can make with your fruit. I love when it gets ready to eat. I just, I, I feel rude walking around eating it, but... I got to eat it. <laughs> and I just want to tell you guys, I wasn't just picking out one of the best rows. They're all loaded like this. All of them. All these rows, these five rows are. The rest are, are, you know, just a couple years old. But these are like on their fourth year. I want to say, yeah, these are four-year plants because those are two-year plants. We skipped a year. So these five, and this is only three three plants right here. I'll show you, this, show you guys this before we wrap it up. This row right here is only three plants. That's three plants long. It's uh, 60 foot because we put in a post, a T post, another T post, and a post. And uh, you plant your plants in 20 foot sections, right in the middle of 10 foot. That's 10 foot. It'll grow 10 foot that way, 10 foot that way. Three plants. And I mean, you get an absolute ton of grapes. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Just a ton of grapes. Easy peasy. And these guys are getting close over here. They're getting close. I've had people ask what varieties I have. I only have five varieties in this pasture because we're doing a U-Pick. And I planted what I thought would be good for a U-Pick or <laughs> actually what Isons recommended uh, as good plants for a U-Pick. I'll show you guys what I got. We have a Supreme, Supreme, uh, Ison, which is our self-fertile, which pollinates the ones around it. These are all self-fertile, so that those are your pollinators. There's a Supreme. Then I got into the Black Beauty, and that's where I stopped. And then we added some more Black Beauty that uh, a couple years later and went on down the row. Black Beauty, got another Isons for pollinating these, because you should have a pollinator 50 foot uh, in between, at least in a 50 foot range of your females. To pollinate them. So we got an Ison's there, Ison's right down there, and then uh, we have Ison here, Ison, 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 because those are my favorite. Here's another Ison, 
all that's icing. So there's going to be tons of, of grapes. There's some more Supreme. I didn't label that one, but I know what it is. Supreme. Supreme. Then we started our scumpernongs. I had to put in some scumpernongs because uh, people like variety. And my wife's favorite is scumpernongs. So we have Darlene, 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 Carlos, Carlos, Darlene, Darlene. Carlos are self-fertile. They'll uh, pollinate the, all the Darlenes. So all these are, are, are our Scumpernome muscadines. All right. Well, I'm going to close this out. And again, find yourselves a good nursery. Uh, and like I said, if there's one thing you should be planting on your property, it's fruit. Plant you some fruit. Apple tree. Find something that's good in your zone and plant it. Plant one. Plant one. And, and, and go from there. You don't have to plant a whole bunch. Everybody's on a budget. Plant one, and then later plant another. When Santa Claus comes to town, let your family know you want some fruit. You want some fruit trees or some blackberry bushes or blueberry bushes or whatever. But if you guys uh, would like to know of a good nursery, check out Ison's Nursery online. That's who I use. They're awesome. Awesome family-owned uh, company. They back all their products. They ship uh so check them out, Ison's Nursery. They have an online catalog, and if you also want a paper catalog to hold in your hand, flip through, no, uh, contact them. They'll send you a online catalog. The planting season is almost here. You want to plant your fruit in the fall and winter while everything's dormant. That way when spring comes around, they take off. They take off. We have apple trees, plum trees. Uh, we've got 120 blackberry bushes. We have peach trees, uh, blueberries, figs. We just... Our whole property, we've tried to put in fruit everywhere we possibly can. My next uh, thing I want to start putting in, I want to put in some more nut trees. I'm on the hunt for some hazelnut trees because they're supposed to be super fast producers and, and really easy to grow, which, which is what I like. But I know I ramble on, guys. Thank you so much for checking out my video. I hope I convinced you guys to go and get you some fruit and put it in the ground. Love you guys to death. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, leave a comment. We'll see you on the next video.